everyone. Greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. In today's tutorial, we are in chapter 2 and we'll be looking into the next topic of the same, that is test levels. So, previous tutorial we spoke about 2.1, that is software development models and give you an input insight on that. Now, this tutorial will be talking about the test levels where we understand that how different levels work and what exactly their contribution to testing are. So let's continue further and understand them in more details. So the very first level is competent testing. Generally, competent testing is all about uh, testing the basic functionalities and behavior of uh, each and every unit of the application. So units can be called as the modules, programs, object, classes, or even also known as like, you know, the each uh, unit itself and where you test them. So generally, uh, this is being, uh, you know, conducted at terms of understanding that each and every component is uh, tending towards doing the core functionalities and the subjected behavior of that. So you generally try with a different set of data, maybe drawing at the code level to make sure that the things are as per the requirement. Now generally this is to conducted by developer and the developer makes use of a, a different approach called as a white box testing, which is done at the structure level or code level. Now we do have another approach called as black box testing, but do not worry about these two terms. We'll be talking that in more detail in the next tutorial. The very next tutorial talks about them in more detail. So generally conducted or practiced as white box testing and uh, performed by the developer because we believe that uh, unit testing or component testing if done at the code level has a more efficient response or more uh, useful to the entire process and gives a lot of value added services to us. More than that, we have certain test bases and typical test objects being included as a part of this level, which would be another important aspect from the examination point of view. That do you take care of the test bases which are required to derive the test cases for unit testing and the typical test object is what you test in the testing of components. The next level is integration testing and generally integration testing is about the flow of data between different models and uh, we also call it as like interfaces or inter interaction between the uh, modules itself. So we do have certain sub-levels here to understand uh, just in point of uh, simple context that we have got something called as component integration testing and system integration testing where component integration testing is about interfaces between the components within the modules. So for example, you try to select a country and then the state, gets, uh, state list gets uh, you know, filtered according to that and then you select a state the city list gets customized as per that so that is what is component integration testing the system integration testing is the small unit of system generally when you talk about a particular transaction to be conducted within a big application then you call it as SIT where you conduct system integration testing and then you collect the several SITs and put it as one system altogether in certain cases, SIT can be conducted post-system testing. For example, when you talk about embedded testing, we generally have uh, system, being, system testing being done for the softwares and hardware separately, and then you go for system integration, where you mean to say that two systems integration together. So like a software hardware, or maybe hardware hardware, or it can be a software software as well, and you try to integrate them then you call it as system integration testing as well. We have several approaches to conduct system integration, that is DDA, top-down approach, BUA, bottom-up approach, and BBA, big bang approach. So on, that's for the two types of in integration testing, that is incremental and non-incremental integration testing. Now again here at the bottom, you can see the test basis for integration testing, where the basis are something which will help you to understand what references can be used as a parent or a reference for deriving the test cases or testing for integration. Whereas te typical test object would add value in terms of what you are testing in integration testing. 
system testing as simple terms uh, system testing is all about end to end testing of an application generally we handle uh, the entire application here to make sure that everything works as per the desired business requirements or system requirements of an application also to certain extent we handle a lot of risk in this particular area or this particular level the reason is once the application is built we we can capture those uh, critical things as a part of the uh, execution itself like once we know the entire application we can capture the different risk which we have identified in the product and can very well mitigate them following that uh, of course uh, the requirements are there to assist you with the same thing and uh, beyond this like after once the system testing gets completed then only you conduct any non functional testing so no no non functional levels are conducted before system because for any non functional level you would need the entire system to be present and again coming to the test basis for system testing we have certain things to be taken care and the typical test objects are listed here so if you see the documentation here uh, the test basis all things are related to the system requirements and generally help you with in terms of understanding the entire architecture of the application or some kind of control flow which will help you to uh, you know test the system exactly and precisely at the end we have got acceptance testing which is about like of course once the system and other non functional levels have been conducted then the system would be declared that declared that the client can come and collect it or accept it now acceptance testing is generally a step uh, performed by the client before accepting it and uh, that's from the traditional point of view but when you talk about agile it's us again we 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 only do it for to showcase in the client premises and many other things but as per uh, istqb it means to say that uh, the client comes to the developer premises and conducts a level of testing before accepting the application is what we generally call it as acceptance testing and uh, typical forms of acceptance testing could be like uh, you know user acceptance operational acceptance regulatory acceptance contractual acceptance business acceptance so there are different you know uh, forms of acceptance testing so client generally when they accept an application they specify that what criteria has were met and what criteria are yet to be met from you so you take care of all other uh, typical forms of acceptance as well moreover uh, acceptance testing also of uh, are conducted at two levels so one is alpha which is to acknowledge and accept the software and second is beta to generally provide this uh, piece of application to a certain group of end users and collect valuable feedback from them so generally uh, during this beta testing or beta phase a client comes to know from the aspects of end user usage that what exactly they want or are they happy with it or not because uh, beta phases have helped us in many ways like for example the windows 8 was a failure because of beta phase where people reported that there is a lot of compatibility issue also there is a user friendly issue like it is not so user friendly like how it was in windows 7 and all those usability parameters also came up during the beta phase so sometime we think from the developer end point of view sometime being testers also we become professional on testing and it but uh, end user remains still the end user so beta testing must be conducted to make sure that we can collect certain information from the user end as well in some cases where you cannot give it to you in the end users for example a banking application safety critical systems aerospace applications or you talk about uh, the fantasy parks amusement parks you cannot ask the end user to do that beta testing for you so you ask the professionals to behave like end users and collect feedback which would also add value to the system preciseness similarly at the end i've got uh, the test basis and typical test objects here so uh, not only the independent thing for each level you also need to create a you know relationship between them for example if there is a common test basis for multiple levels then you need to remember that just for your highlight a uh, use cases is a common test basis for integration system and acceptance testing whereas risk analysis reports our common basis for system and acceptance testing now this is a tip which will help you to uh, answer certain questions generally they ask you in this particular section so keeping that with mind hope you have understood this tutorial about the 
test levels. In case you have any other be queries beyond this, you are free to comment it below. And I'll be there to assist you with that. In case you are not subscribed to the channel, please do the needful for that. I'll be here to, you know, update more with the, the coming chapters and coming tutorials. So stay tuned with that, with the notifications. Anyways, thanks for watching the video team. I'll be coming back with another tutorial soon. Till then, take care and happy learning.